Hello YouTube and welcome to a new Unity 3D tutorial land. So what we're gonna do is this tutorial is we're gonna make a little garage. Now a user requested this, I hope I actually put the comment thing that this morning. I mean at the beginning but I never do, but yeah. And um, we're gonna put the garage around about here just so you can drive in. And what we need to do is make it so if the character's in a car, um we need to in order we need to store that vehicle's rotation position in a static variable so it can be accessed no matter when we change levels this is really really good and I've managed to crack it but at the moment because it will take quite a while it will only work on one vehicle at once so eventually we'll make it so you can have multiple vehicles and multiple garages but for now one garage one vehicle but it's really really um, we'll do it again basically so what I'm going to do first is just create a quick small garage using three cubes um, so we'll go 10, 5, 1, that'll do. So if we drag this up, we have a base wall, then we can duplicate it again, and then we rotate it 90 degrees, and we'll make it 15, just so it's a bit longer, and put it here, duplicate it and move it to here. So there's our basic garage for now. So you can put a roof over it if you'd like, but uh, yeah, go on then, we'll put a roof over it. Why not? So we'll set this to zero. In fact, 90 will be better on that one. And I think it's the x-axis, yep. So we can go to the top view and move it here and scale it up. So there's our roof. Not the perfect, not well, not the best garage full stop. But hey, it's quick and simple. So actually, we may need to move all these up, else it won't work. So change this to 10. Not 10, that's a bit high. 8, that's better. Yeah, just so when our character jumps out, it doesn't glitch. So we're going to create an empty game object inside here. And we'll call it Garage. Stick all these cubes in, we'll call it Garage Wall. And we'll stack it in here. There we go. So there's our garage. However, what we need is a large empty box collider inside here to determine when the character is actually inside it. Now you can just have one here if you like, and you can just use on trigger enter. But the reason I'm making it fill this entire thing when we do it is so then you can say on trigger stay. So if the character's in there, it'll do it. Because if the, you use on trigger enter and they drive through it, in that case, when we use the on trigger exit to determine whether they take the vehicle out or not, then they'll be able to spawn as many of those vehicles as possible and it will not work right. So, all we're going to do inside here is duplicate garage wall and remove everything off it except the box collider. Move it in and we'll rename it to garage. Seems easy enough. And we'll drag the y axis a bit lower than it should be just so it's not intersecting. See now we can just barely see the green line but if we change it to wireframe you can see it a bit better. Yeah, you can see it a lot better. So if we drag it out where it needs to be about there there we go. So what's it like? Does it fill it? Almost. Just need to make it like kind of fill it also no matter where they park the car it's there. See, I think that's good enough. So, we've got that inside there. So now we're going to go to our scripts folder, and we'll go to vehicles. In fact, landscape. We'll create a new one called garage or garage, whichever way you want to say it. Uh, yeah, and we'll drag this onto the actual box collider garage. You can you can drag it onto others, but it's not as handy for what we're going to do. Drag it onto there. And what we're going to do quickly is create a new tag for our vehicles, which you'll see why later. So add tag and we'll call this vehicle. And I want to assign this to these ones here. Vehicle. So now if we go to our garage and open up our new script. Here. So we can zoom in, I remember this time. So what we're going to do is we need both these functions, but we also need an extra one. 
um, not this one, on trigger stay, which is why I said um, this will detect when your character has parked his car inside the garage, and on trigger exit will determine when your character leaves it. So both of these will need um, a, oh, I can't I can't remember the name of it. It's no, I can't remember the name. But one of these things um, inside the brackets, I had the name. I was doing it. We did it for classes, but I can't remember. Um, comment if you remember it, please. I can't remember. Um, so that so them two are there. The function start will be there to provide each time the scene loads, it will detect whether it previously stored a car or not. So, we need three variables, um, a string and two vector threes. We need a string to save the vehicle's name which was stored. We need a, two vector threes for the position and rotation of it. You don't have to do the rotation, but I figured if you parked your car like in a diagonal position and you go back to it, you'd want it in a diagonal position or something, just to make it look better. So that's, that's why we're going to do it. Really simple to do though. So the reason we've put tags on these is in our on trigger stay and end exit, we're going to type if tag or call dot tag equals vehicle. So in here we're going to type if call dot tag equals vehicle. And what that'll do is basically determine whether it's our character going in or a car what's going in. So when we actually go into the trigger, um, both our character and um, the vehicle will flash a trigger, but only one of them will actually do something, the vehicle. Because you can't drive two vehicles at once. Yes, yeah, so that's why it'll do it. So, if you were to park two cars inside of here, it would probably glitch. But So try not to do that for now. But we are eventually going to do it another way. But yeah. So, we need... Well, now that our character's in there, we need to make sure that they're out of the vehicle in order to store it. Because they could just drive in, you'll store the properties and they'll drive out again. And then you, it, the car will just automatically spawn there. And that's not what we want. If they park it in the garage, we want it to stay in the garage. So, um, what we need to do is check whether they are in a vehicle or not. And luckily, if you click on our get vehicle script on one of our cars, we have a static variable here player in vehicle which determines whether we're in the car or not so if when we enter the trigger if the tag of it equals play of, not player vehicle it will be get in vehicle dot player in vehicle equals false because we don't want them in you could also do do not is like is not true but that's a bit pointless so if we hit it and it's vehicle it determines yes this is a car are we in the vehicle still? No. Now we need to begin storing the variables. This is really, really simple. So we're going to create the variables we talked about earlier. So var stored name. This will be a string. Duplicate this. Vector 3. Vector 3. So stored pos for position and stored rot for rotation. However, if we were to just use those, they would reset every time we load the level and it wouldn't work. So now we have to make them static. So they can be over levels. What we will eventually do is link it up to an XML file, which I'll talk about another time, where we can save and load the properties of the level. So we'll be able to have mass amounts of garages and cars and vehicles and players and everything. And they'll all just save all the digits. It'll work really, really well. Um, that's probably why most games like storing such big data. So, so in here, what we're going to do is now set each of these. So it's really, really simple. So um, we need to set garage dot stored name equals call single equals call dot name game object dot name. So the stored name equals that. Simple enough. Duplicate that. Stored pass equals game object dot transform dot position. So we've just stored the position. Now the rotation is slightly different. So if we do the same again, now the transform dot is we did, can't put rotation because it won't it returns quaternion, which is for instantiate. We can't put rotate or rotate I believe it is because that doesn't return anything. What we actually have to do, which is kind of weird, it would have made more sense to make it rotation, but n u n u l 
angles. I really need to figure out how to pronounce that one. But that one, what we use to edit rotations, you use that again. So that'll store it and edit it if you like. So try to knock that into your brain like I'm trying to do. Position and ruler angles, local scale. That's what you need. So if we were to run that, nothing would happen. We'd store it, it'd store our position. As soon as we change level, it wouldn't work. So, what we need to do up here is make it fire, store that vehicle in a garage. Simple enough. So, what we're going to do here is type as soon as the scene starts, as soon as the script's on, which it'll always be on, so this will only run once. We're going to type if garage.stored name if you like, you can do any does not equal nothing. So, basically, if it's got a name now. What we can do is type if game object dot find and then we try to find this stored name here. So basically if it finds it, then what do we want it to do with it, which we'll do in a minute, but we're gonna adapt it. So find that game object and then get its transform dot parent and if it equals vehicles then we know that it's an empty object because ours is stored in vehicles. The reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna when we find our vehicle and it reloads it, we're gonna spawn it in garage. Because when we have multiple garages, if we say find I don't know hum V and it'll start in this garage, then it'll try to find another one, and the first one it'll find will obviously be this Hum V because it's already found it first. So it'll keep moving this Hum V between garages, and it, we don't want that. We want it to find one Hum V, then find another one, then another one. So what this will do here, we'll find that one Hum V, but then when we change the parent, it won't equal vehicles no more. So when we add another one, it'll find that instead of the one we've just stored. If your mind has just blown up, I apologise, but just keep watching and you will find it, I promise. So here now, we need to set, so we found this game object here. We need to set that as properties to our stored properties. So we already know the name is where it is, so that's simple. So here we're going to type gameobject.find garage stored name dot pos transform dot position that one equals garage dot stored pos. So we've now moved it into our garage. Perfect. That one works. We now need to move the rotation. So again, and ruler angles, and um, we equal stored rot. However, the final one is to change our parent of it. So transform dot parent equals, and then this is really really simple. Game object dot transform. Just like that, super simple. So quick run through. This is our variables to store all the properties of the stored vehicle. And then it'll do this. So if we enter the trigger with a vehicle and it's tagged as vehicle, so it is a vehicle, then if our character gets out of it, which they should in order to store it, then store the data up there. And yes, you can come in, take it out, put it back in. We haven't done this bit yet. So once that's done, if we load change scene, it'll come on back to here. Is the garage have a stored name? Yes, we have stored a previous vehicle. Here, um, find the parent, does it equal vehicles? Yes, it does, so that means we're available to move it about. Then do this. The only thing we do have to do is when it exits, we need to set the parent to nothing, so it's not still part of the garage, else it'll not ever respawn it. So down here, on function on trigger exit, so when we leave it, all we need to do is type if call equals vehicle so it's not just our character walking out of it it's actually the vehicle reversing I suppose you could glitch it by driving another vehicle in and entering while leaving but yeah don't <laughs> we will fix that one day so we're going to copy these through here and paste it in here I did say this was um, needs to be tweaked in the future but so we're going to set the name to nothing we're going to set the position to vector 3, 0, 0, 0. So it equals absolutely nothing. And we'll set the um, the rotation position to nothing. Yeah, okay, no, sorry, I zoned, zoned out there. But yeah, so we should try that now, and hopefully that should work perfectly. I know we haven't reset the parent back, but I was just thinking about that, and like, 
we can't really put it in without glitches so we're just going to try it like it is so we have a null reference exception garage line 10 which is this one so I just found our error what was in we're basically saying here if the parent of the car we've stored equals a string so we're saying if an object equals a string and the computer is saying no sorry that doesn't make no sense to me so what we need to do is if the parent string name equals the string so the dot name on the end of it so if the transform dot parent dot name equals equals vehicles name we have to put the name in however we have another issue when it finds this here it will go does the store find the stored name the current stored name as soon as we start is null n u l l nothing so it'll say find the word nothing sorry that doesn't make no sense why would you want to find nothing so we simply have to put equals nothing simple just like that so we can play it and now we should be able to get into our vehicle drive away into the garage park up and get out and it should store it so get in drive around here then we'll go and go in here So as you can see, we haven't yet turned it to a trigger, which we should have done. So select your garage and turn it to a trigger, retry. Because that's why we've done function on trigger enter and stay. So there, we've bounced on top of it, which we really need to fix. But our thing is now stored, our car is now stored in there. So if we come over here just to this, just to change level, press E, we change level. With a quick quit, we'll jump back, and you will see that the car is no longer outside where we are. See, it's gone. But it's not gone, it's right where we put it. Right here. Oh dear. That's gone horrifically wrong. I've never done that before. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Why has it done it? Where is it? I think we should just not make the parent this. So, um, yes. So when we grab this, we'll set this one here. So call dot transform dot parent equals null. So when we leave with a vehicle, then we'll make it null because it's stretching it and it shouldn't. But I, that's a glitch in Unity. That when I tried this, that didn't work. So I did say there was a lot of glitches in this garage script. We are eventually going to fix it one day. We still have to go back to the shop to fix that. But I'm trying to figure out how to get classes in there. We can put any car in it. Any one will do the same. That's why we've used strings. So park it. Get right. Jump over here. E. Quit. So it's done it again. Okay, so there's a small glitch when we exit, so let's just get rid of that parent and get rid of this one for now. So try not to put the parents on thank you for watching i hope you liked it it is a bit buggy but it's like anything we need to fix it eventually um i hope you like my garage my garage is cool everybody loves my garage so please join my facebook group thank you to the guy who su suggested this i will put your name in the script well yeah in the beginning um you did a really good favor re relating it to one of my favorite games as well i'm not going to say which game but yeah so um Thank you for watching, Facebook group, please like it if you did like this video. Um, my Facebook group, you will get instant updates and everything. There we are, much better, fixed. So thank you for watching, I hope you liked it.